look at that galaxy cluster. Why are those galaxies moving so quickly? There's not enough mass in the stars for the gravity to hold it all together. I know, it must be some unseen matter holding it together. We'll call it dark matter. Oh, look at those galaxies. Aren't they traveling a bit fast? They're all moving away from us at accelerating speeds. Must be some kind of unseen energy driving the cosmic expansion. We'll call it dark energy. What is dark energy and dark matter? Um, I don't know, some kind of placeholder for everything we don't understand, I suppose. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. It's time. ESA's Euclid mission launch is imminent and it's going to solve everything about the dark universe and unravel its mysteries. Do dark matter and dark energy actually exist? And if so, what's their nature? Euclid will answer all of these questions and more and in this video I'm going to tell you how. The European Space Agency have built a 1.2 meter telescope equipped with two instruments, the Visual Imager, VIS, and the Near Infrared Spectrometer and Photometer, NISP, to send to space. Euclid was originally scheduled to launch on a Soyu rocket from the European spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. However, due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, ESA was forced to find a new launch vehicle for Euclid. ESA's Ariane 5 rocket unfortunately was retiring. The last Ariane 5 launch would be in June and there was a big queue because everything else planned for Soyuz launches also was scrapped. So there was no way that it would make it in time, especially because it would have to be redesigned to fit the fairing. Ariane 6, the next generation of Ariane 5, is still nowhere in sight. Who knows when it will become operational? And it's quite a bit more expensive. So in the end, the new launch vehicle for Euclid is SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, scheduled for the 1st of July. Now, here's the catch. Euclid is going to the Sun-Earth Lagrange point, L2, 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. It's a stable orbit, which means that the spacecraft can stay there without much fuel. Also, it's home to JWST. However, it's also a very distant object which requires a lot of fuel to reach. The Falcon 9 is primarily designed for launching payloads into Earth orbit, including satellites, resupply missions to the International Space Station, the ISS, and various other space missions. Falcon 9 has never been to L2, or even into its vicinity. I'm not even sure it's powerful enough to reach there. A bigger rocket like Falcon Heavy would have been more appropriate. So we'll just have to cross our fingers and wait and see. Okay, you may be wondering why Euclid wants to go to space in the first place. Why not just build this telescope on the ground? Well, Euclid's main scientific job is to measure the shapes of galaxies for gravitational lensing. So gravitational lensing is when the shapes of galaxies is distorted as seen from Earth because the emitted light from that galaxy is pulled and tugged by the gravity of any intervening mass it meets along the way. So this includes dark matter. Actually, it's mostly dark matter since dark matter constitutes 85% of the total mass of the universe. If there was some intervening mass between a field of galaxies and Earth, then you would get a preferential direction of ellipticities, and this is what astronomers call shear. However, since galaxies are expected to have all shapes and orientations, this may be a little difficult to see. This is why you need to average over many thousands of galaxies, because you would assume that on average, these orientations and shapes would cancel out if no dark matter were present. The larger the shear effect means that there is more dark matter along that line of sight. But gravity is not the only thing that affects what the galaxies look like. Gravitational lensing changes the shapes of galaxies by less than 1% on average. If you're observing from the ground, then the galaxies are seen through the atmosphere, which can blur and change the shape of galaxy. You have pixelization due to the limited resolution of your camera, but thankfully, VIS has 36 16 megapixel detectors, so equivalent to 610 megapixel resolution images in the visible sky. And lastly, you also have noise. By taking the images from space, we'll remove the convolution introduced by the atmosphere and greatly improve our ability to measure galaxy shapes. Euclid will observe a third of the entire sky, skipping over the dusty galactic disk of the Milky Way, 
and from weak gravitational lensing measurements, it will be able to map dark matter in our universe, the thing we thought we couldn't see. But its gravity allows us to infer where it is. But not only will Euclid map the dark matter of our universe, it's also going to make a 3D map of everything in the universe because Euclid is equipped with NISP, a spectrograph which will be able to measure the spectra and hence the distances of galaxies out to a redshift of 2.5. This means that it will be able to see galaxies that formed about 10 billion years ago. Now this comes into play for the other main scientific job of Euclid and that is to measure the Baryonic Acoustic Oscillations or BAO for short. Now BAO is a very peculiar phenomena that originated from the early universe when photons and matter were coupled together. After the Big Bang the intense radiation pressure caused fluctuations in the density of matter. These density fluctuations resulted in regions of slightly higher and slightly lower density. You can imagine them as two particles, one of the photon and one of the matter, attached by a string, and the photon trying to escape the potential well whilst the matter trying to pull it back down. At the epoch of recombination, the universe cooled enough that the photons could decouple from the matter. The photons began to travel freely through space, whilst matter continued to evolve under the influence of gravity, so you can imagine them sinking into these potential wells. As you can imagine from the spring analogy, if you were to let go of this bouncing spring, the matter would go somewhat flying. And this sets a characteristic scale of how far the photon and matter could travel before the actual decoupling happens. And as a result, this leaves an imprint on the distribution of matter in the universe. This imprint is called the Baryonic Acoustic Oscillation Signature, where you'll find regions of slightly higher density had an excess of matter, while the regions of lower density now have a deficit. Over time, gravity causes matter to collapse into these regions, forming denser structures such as galaxies and galaxy clusters. Observationally, what this means is that there's a preferred separation distance between galaxies. And by calculating the separation between all of the galaxies in the universe, we'll be able to see this excess of galaxies being separated by this characteristic scale. By studying the statistical analysis of the clustering pattern in galaxies, scientists can extract information about the curvature of space and the expansion rate of our universe, aka learn about dark energy. So this has been a super long video already and I actually have so much more to say. In particular, I want to tell you about how Euclid will help us rule out many dark energy theories. But I'm going to have to leave it for another video. If all goes smoothly and following the 30 day cruise to L2, Euclid will be surveying the sky for an operational time of 6 years. But that's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.